Hi everyone. Today we are going to compare short key barrier diode with PN junction diode. We have already studied that the voltage current relationship of short key diode is given by the equation J equal to JST exponential EVA divided by KT minus 1 where VA is the forward applied voltage. And this equation is in same form as that of the PN junction diode. But there are two important differences between short key barrier diode and PN junction diode. They are first one, the magnitude of reverse saturation current density and the second one, the difference in frequency response or switching characteristic. The reverse saturation current density of short key barrier diode is given by JST equal to A star T square exponential minus E phi Bn divided by KT. Where A star is the effective Richardson constant and this phi Bn is the actual short key barrier height. The ideal reverse saturation current density of PN junction diode is given by another equation JS which is equal to E DN NPO by LN plus E DP PNO by LP where NPO equal to NI square divided by NA which is the thermal equilibrium minority carrier electron concentration in P region and PNO is NI square divided by ND which is the thermal equilibrium minority carrier hole concentration in N region and capital LN and LP they are diffusion lengths of electrons and holes respectively and here we can see that this equation, equation for JST that is the reverse saturation current density of short key barrier diode and that of the PN junction diode, they are totally different. According to this equation, current in short key barrier diode is determined by the thermionic emission of majority carriers over a potential barrier. According to this equation in PN junction diode, current is determined by the diffusion of minority carriers. And a reverse bias current in a silicon PN junction diode is dominated by the generation of current. And a typical generation current density of PN junction diode is approximately of the order of 10 raised to minus 7 ampere per centimeter square. This value, it is 2 to 3 orders of magnitude less than that of the reverse saturation current density of short key barrier diode. The generation current also exists in reverse biased short key barrier diode. However, the generation current is negligibly small compared to that of JST value. Here, we can see that JST is much greater than JS. The forward bias characteristics of two types of diodes will also be different. Here in this figure, we can see the typical IV characteristics of two diodes. And the effective turn on voltage of this short key diode, it is much less than that of the PN junction diode. This difference between turn on voltage will be the function of barrier height of metal semiconductor contact and doping concentration in PN junction. The second difference between short key diode and PN junction diode is in its frequency response or switching characteristics. We know that current in a short key diode is due to the injection of majority carriers over a potential barrier. If an electron from the valence band of the semiconductor flow into the metal, it is equivalent to a hole being injected into semiconductor. This injection of holes will create an excess minority carrier hole in semiconductor. But the calculations as well as the measurements shown that the ratio of the minority carrier hole current 
to the total current is extremely low in most cases. So, we can consider short key diode as a majority carrier device. There is no diffusion capacitance associated with a forward biased short key diode. The elimination of the diffusion capacitance makes the short key diode higher frequency device than the PN junction diode. Also, when switching a short key diode from forward to reverse bias, there is no minority carrier stored charge to remove. But in the case of PN junction diode, we know that here we have to remove the stored charge minority carriers. Since there is no minority charge storage time, the short key diodes can be used in fast switching applications. A typical switching time for short key diode is in pico second range, while that of PN junction diode is normally in nanosecond range. Let us now do one problem. Our first problem is calculate the reverse saturation current densities of a short key barrier diode and a PN junction diode. Here the tungsten barrier on silicon with a measured barrier height is given as E5 BN approximately equal to 0.67 electron volt and Richardson constant and T values are given. We know that reverse saturation density of short key diode JST equal to A star T square exponential minus E5 BN divided by KT. Now substitute the values of uh, A star T as 300 and E5 BN as 0.67. And KT value, we know that it is equal to 0 0.0259. We get the answer as 5.98 into 10 raised to minus 5 ampere per centimeter square. For calculating the ideal reverse saturation current density of PN junction diode, consider the silicon PN junction diode with these parameters. We know that Na equal to 10 raised to 18 centimeter raised to minus 3. Nd equal to 10 raised to 16 centimeter raised to minus 3. Ni is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 10 centimeter raised to minus 3. Dp 10 centimeter square per second. Dn 25 centimeter square per second. Lifetime of excited carrier tau PO equal to 10 raised to minus 7. And that of tau NO is 10 raised to minus 7. Now we can calculate uh, the diffusion lengths LP and LN using the equation root of DP tau PO and LN equal to root of DN tau NO. Then we get the values as 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 centimeter and 1.58 into 10 raised to minus 3 centimeter. Then we can calculate PNO using the equation Ni square divided by Nd and we get the answer as 2.25 into 10 raised to 4 centimeter raised to minus 3. And NPO as Ni square divided by Na which is equal to 2.25 into 10 raised to 2 centimeter raised to minus 3. Now we know that the ideal reverse saturation current density of PN junction diode J is equal to EDN NPO by LN plus EDP PNO divided by LP. Substituting all these values, we get the answer as 3.66 into 10 raised to minus 11 ampere per centimeter square. So comparing the value of JST and JS, we can see that the ideal reverse saturation current density of the short key barrier junction diode is orders of magnitude larger than that of the ideal PN junction diode. Next problem, calculate the forward bias voltage required to generate a forward bias current density of 
10 ampere per centimeter square in a short key barrier diode and a pn junction diode here the temperature is given as 300 kelvin jst equal to 5.98 into 10 raise to minus 5 ampere per centimeter square js equal to 3.66 into 10 raise to minus 11 ampere per centimeter square here we can assume that the pn junction diode will be sufficiently forward biased so that the ideal diffusion current will dominate so we get the equation as j equal to jst exponential eva divided by kt minus 1 in the right hand side we can neglect uh, this minus 1 term and we can take this JST to the left hand side. So, J by JST is exponential EVA by KT. Now, take the logarithm. Then we get the expression for VA as KT divided by E ln J divided by JST. KT divided by E, that is our VF. So, it is VF ln J by JST. We can substitute the values and we get the answer as 0.312 volt. And for the PN junction diode, we have forward voltage VA equal to VF ln J divided by JS instead of JST. Now we can put the value of JS in this expression and we get the answer as 0.682 volt.